episode, we started the demo work on the RV, and I built a tarp building, only to find that it had succumbed to the weather after returning from my trip from Puerto Rico. Stay tuned to the second part of this exciting saga. You can see Chris came out here and saw the snow was bending the frame, and he disconnected the ropes, tried to salvage the tarp, and keep the RV dry, and both of which seems to have succeeded. Yeah, I don't have this on camera, but um, most of those upright supports on the tarp building buckled and failed and had to be replaced. And that's the reason for the wood that I'm about to show you. It's getting late in the season. I don't think it's going to snow again. Like I said, it's bound to not snow again for another two or three years, probably. Remember yesterday when I said it won't snow again for three years? Um, I'm thinking about becoming a political pundit. So at least I can make big bucks for being wrong all the time. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's what we got so far. This is turning into a hybrid kind of thing. Um, if this is a dumb idea, it's not the dumbest idea I've ever had. So I don't know whether this may be overkill. But these things I don't think are going to go anywhere anymore buckle like they did and uh, show how I did this so I put these in hey I live in timber country timber's uh, lumber's cheap here huh <laughs> it's not not real cheap but it's like it's not this is less than a hundred dollars to do all this and uh, see how we are like that so these are tied together these are pretty rigid now and uh, I'm going to cut these off, of course, tomorrow and put the tarp up there. Here's what this looks like now. Um, my phone, well, um, unfortunately, some dumbass stole my video camera last summer. And so I've been using my phone to video. And uh, my phone screen broke last weekend. And uh, I took it to get fixed. And when I got it back, they had reset my phone. And I lost all my video um, that wasn't on my computer, which was quite a bit of stuff, which was the progress of all of this. So unfortunately, I can't show it to you as I'm putting it in place, although that would probably be boring anyway. Here's the after shot. Um, and I'll show you what I used. Still obviously have to put this back in the, the light fixtures. But I think it turned out pretty well. <clears throat> And then Chris is going to come along, put putty in these uh, holes. See, we got molding along the corners, three-quarter inch molding. And uh, I put, uh, I got little pencil lines where the screws go. And Chris is going to come by and uh, erase the pencil marks, put the putty in, and put uh, urethane on this um, after I've moved on to some other thing. I'm pretty happy with it though. This looks a lot nicer than the original, huh? And I'll show you what I used for this. This is what I used. This is uh, called Wayne's Cotting. It comes, uh, I got this at Home Depot. It comes in a package. And uh, it's really thin, tongue and groove. I think it's 3 8 inch thick, something like that. And uh, this is okay if you're putting it over something, you know. It's not very structural in and of itself. But typically you'd put this like line a wall with it for decorative purposes or in my case um, what we did was frame the we framed it in and uh, so that was all solid framing and insulation that uh, foam insulation when I put this stuff on and then I used adhesive and screwed this there were steel girders going across the ceiling screwed this into the steel girders and uh, adhesed it to the glued it to the uh, the foam insulation so it's pretty solid it's not really having to provide any structural support 
and it's kind of ironic. I'm in Oregon. Okay, this is big timber country. This is cedar. The cedar probably came from Oregon in the first place, but this is a product of China. <laughs> Somebody's shipping the raw logs to China and letting them mill them and ship them back here. Here's what the floor looks like now. I still have to put corner molding on the uh, edges, which I'm about to do now. Before, after. What I used is this stuff. This is Pergo floating floor. And uh, some scraps here. You can see it's a tongue and groove kind of thing. And it just uh, kind of fit this in. You put it kind of at an angle here. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. But anyway, it's easy to put together. You kind of put it in at an angle. And I'm not able to get it slip in with one hand here to hold the camera, but you slip it in kind of like that and then push it down. I know there's a special tool. It's good to have a rubber mallet to uh, kind of knock it down. I didn't have the tool. I didn't have the mallet. I just put all this together by hand. And so it's not very difficult. I'm just saying it kind of snaps into place. Um, on the edges, you can take a, a bar and kind of Squeeze it in, or you can take a, a piece of stock like this, a scrap piece, and stick the tongue in the groove, and then bang on this with a hammer. Don't ever bang on their finished product with a hammer, but you can bang on your scrap piece with a hammer. That'll pop it into place. This is a... <clears throat> I've used Traffic Master before. Um, this stuff's a little bit more expensive. And I would use this again over Traffic Master. I'm probably going to do a video comparing the two. The Traffic Master works pretty well, just to summarize. And I, I put it in my house, and it worked fine, and it wears well. When I put it in my bus conversion, um, it's a little tighter space, you know. And uh, anyway, moisture around the kitchen area, moisture got in it. In my house, the kitchen has tile, and the bus, the kitchen has this stuff. And it started buckling a little bit because of the moisture. Um, and this stuff is supposed to do better with moisture, so I decided to use that in here. As it is in the kitchen as well. So we'll see. It, it is definitely um, a beefier kind of product. The difference in cost was not that great. I still, I still got one left here that I'm about to do. So, anyway... That's why I went with the Pergo, and it uh, wasn't a lot more, especially for a small space like this. So know. we put the floor down, you know, and I was one piece shy. I needed one more piece, and I wasn't sure if I could buy it, you know, one at a time. Went back to the store, I go, can I buy a, a single piece, or do I have to buy the entire box to get one more piece? He goes, uh, well, yeah, you have to buy the box unless it's a sample. I go, I just need one more piece. He goes a sample <laughs> and so they just gave it to me for free the guy just wrote sample on it and luckily that's all I needed it was just one more <laughs> so sweet here's the sixth grade education way of figuring out an angle <laughs> I need to do this angle here it's not a 45 it's kind of a I don't know what it is a 60 or something I just arbitrarily set the saw to an angle and you can see that is way too, uh, not not sharp enough. So I'm going to go back and try it again. We can see that's better. That's closer, but it's still not sharp enough. So, try number three. Okay, look at that. There we go. So now I have the saw set correctly to cut the molding for that angle. And you know, yeah, there's better ways of doing this. I could have gotten a protractor and uh, just measured the angle. I don't have one handy. And this entire process took me about five minutes, and I got what I needed. Next time, I will be finishing up the RV redo by finally fixing the leaky roof. I'll be stripping off the old roof coating and applying three cans of RV roof repair. Yep, it just doesn't get any better than this, does it? Hey, thanks for watching, man. Check you next time. Have a good one.